Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 19 of my 3D printed Star Wars R6 project. Have a look at part 7a to find out how you can get all the downloads for absolutely free to print your own. Last time I put the lifeform scanner in the head and prior to that I did some other details and put in some utility arms in the body with a circular saw and various other things. This time we're going to add some more stuff to the head because we've got quite a few gaps to fill. So we're going to do some animatronics and some more colourful panels. Here's the head so far. We've got the periscope just here, the lifeform scanner in the other side and obviously the eye and the features on the front. But we've got this panel open here. We've got some electronics in there, the Adafruit servo board and the breakout board that comes off the top of the slip ring in the top of the head. But we're going to put some more panels on there. There should be a sort of triangular panel, a flat panel with a strut in and some other things. Hopefully one of those is going to open and a little arm is going to pop out. I'd also like to put some more flaps on the head, at least in these two, um, which probably won't have anything popping out of them right now, but I want to make the flaps open like they do on R2-D2. Here is one of the head panels. It's fairly unexciting looking, but I've basically used the head structure to get the angle right, and you'll notice it's slightly curved on the top there. We should uh, match the contour of the head should it have skins. It also matches the length of the one I've put on top of the periscope. So there's going to be two of these per section, although of course the periscope's got one big one because um, the periscope's bigger than one of these, so it's going to look a little bit odd. But I'm going to have four of these, so two in each of the empty panels. Here are the other panels for the side of the head. So I've got two that are quite flat there, including the triangular one, and again these have got the contours to go around the side of the head. And I've got one there with a recess in, which is going to have a kind of strut in, which um, if you look at pictures of R6, you can kind of see, don't know what it does, um, but that's just going to be fixed in there. So the middle panel is going to be a door which opens, and then I'm going to have another feature, hopefully, that pokes out of there at some point. Some of my head panels are printed, so these ones will go here and I need to make some brackets to hold them so they're just floating there. This one of course is a door that will be on hinges. And then I've got this one which goes at the back here which has got this strut in that I printed and I'm just sticking that in now. So I need to make some little brackets and get the ones printed on the top of the head. Here is my hinge for the head parts for those flaps on top and it may well be the hinge for the door that opens. So the aim is a servo sits in the gap in the middle there at the bottom pushing up against the leverage point on the red hinge part um, and that should actually push up and open the flap and it should give quite a lot of clearance so I've used this uh, rounded hinge piece and the blue sketch line there shows the angle of that head flap and of course the flap sits outside the frame and it would be flush with the rest of the skins if there were any. So um, that should push all the way up and hopefully clear the frame and I just have to be careful to mount the flaps correctly so they don't bind on the extra bit of frame to the left of this. Of course this is going to be printed lying down with some support material in that gap to support the other side of the hinge and that gives me the strongest plastic part. I now have a number of the panels printed for the head and I've got the little mechanism which is very simple, servo sits in here, pushes against this pivot point and hinges the panel all the way back. So these have to fit on the inside here and it looks like they're just about right. If I get this the right way around to hinge this back and it should come all the way back outside the rim here, which is good, so I just need to get the servo fitted with its appropriate linkage and get those solvent welded in. We're getting there, I've got these panels all attached and all of these as well, so these of course all flip open, which seems to work pretty well. And I've also got this door here, which also opens. There we go, so that's uh, probably going to have something coming out of it at some point. At the moment it's quite useful to be able to get to the servo controller. But I could have a thing that hinges round from the back of the panel with the strut on. 
because it's quite a good place to mount something, so I'll be thinking about what I can put on there in the future. So all of these need to be coded up. I've only put three flaps on the head. I have actually got the fourth one, which is going to live in this gap, but due to the eye mounting, I can't actually get the mechanism on, so I think what I'm going to have is a fixed panel, uh, perhaps with an aerial on or something, although it needs to fold down for transport or be magnetically removable. So I'm not going to rush and uh, put that on because I need to take this droid to a show. Um, I've also put another little triangle round here just to fill in the panels, and I've got another piece to go in here which is going to be fixed. So that basically makes the whole head look a lot fuller because I've got some sense of having panels on it instead of lots of empty space. Here are all my head panels fitted, so I've got all to see those on that side, and now the two orange panels on that side, plus all the flaps. I've actually run out of buttons on my crazy remote control, so I've coded it in to operate at the end of the hollow projector sequence. Eventually I'll put individual things on these menus that I've got, and the buttons will be sequences of things. But for now if I press this button, I get the hollow projector, then all those panels activate. Let's just have a look at that again. And of course the big orange door will eventually have something else that pops out of it, so that will be part of another sequence. Let's just have a look at all of the things that it does. 